No, no. <laughs> yes, uh, Mr. Mukwena, yeah, that's how we should be done. Eh? Can you hear me? Yeah, so 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 the presentation is okay now. Mr. Mukwena. Mr. Mukwena. Mr. Mukwena. Mr. Mukwena. Baba, I'm with you. Yes, uh, I'm saying that we can see the presentation now. Yes. So you can stop sharing it. So when it's your turn to present, you do the same thing. Okay. So Thank you me. can stop sharing it, yeah. Thank you so much. Good, good evening, colleagues. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Good, good evening, madam. Good evening, sir. How are you in this cold weather? Hey, don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> we've just, yeah, we've just had load shedding. You know, we are lucky that it's back, that electricity is back. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and I understand yeah. there's shortage of gas in the country. I know, I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> okay.
Hi, good afternoon. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. 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 I have been frustrated in trying to Wi-Fi is not working. So yeah, that's why there was a delay in the country. Can I ask that all of you, you must mute your mics, switch them off. If possible, please switch off also your video. <clears throat> okay, good, up, good evening members, uh, you're welcome to this meeting. Um, and uh, welcome to all the Tibet colleges. We, we invited you at short notice and uh, we are very thankful that you honored our invitation and you came. Uh, we had to change our program. Uh, we're supposed to call you on Friday, so we had to swap them around because of uh, the hectic nature of our program here in Parliament. But <clears throat> these things are expected, so uh, welcome. Anele, can we just check how many members are present tonight? Good evening, Chair. Good evening to the honourable members. Chairperson, at the moment, the members that I see are read as follows. And Honorable Notata, Honorable Pozoli, Honorable Poshoff, Honorable Kietzi, Honorable Litsie, Honorable Sibia. Those are the members that I see at the moment, Chairperson. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Thank you very much. I think we do form a quorum. Uh, we, can, we can then proceed uh, with the business of the day. We, we had invited right. the... I've just asked all of you to move your mics now. Somebody is asking why is that uh, You're disturbing us now. We want to proceed to the meeting. Okay, we have invited the, the three Tibet colleges. Uh, we chose them to have an engagement. As part of our program, we yeah, we, we, we had said from the beginning that we would like to engage directly with the stakeholders and the entities okay. that are we have invited within the, the portfolio that we the oversee. So as and when we will invite uh, specific chose the universities, we will invite specific uh, Tibet colleges, program, would we would invite uh, specific sitas. Uh, and all the entities uh, in the department, uh, in the two departments that we are responsible for overseeing. So this afternoon or this evening, we have the three Tibet colleges we have sent. We have prepared a list of questions which centers around governance issues, uh, management issues, financial issues, as well as uh, the readiness of the specific colleges to save the 2020 academic year. So it's quite a list of questions. I hope that all of you have prepared around those questions. We have one and a half hour to receive the presentations. I think we should add about 10 minutes so that it becomes 40 each because the list of questions, are, it's, a, it's, a, it's quite a long list of questions. So let's do justice and give each college about 40 minutes to take us through uh, the issues that we invited them to to come and uh, report to us around. I don't know which one do we start with, Diana. According to the program, Chair, is uh, King, sir. 
Okay. <clears throat> Do we have apologies for for tonight? Jefferson, we received uh, apologies from the deputy minister as well as the DG Jefferson. Um, from members, I did not receive any apology. Uh, okay. Chair. Uh, Honourable Lizzie. Yes, uh, Honourable Manani, so is still struggling to connect. Uh, I've just sent it to her on her phone, so she will connect as soon as uh, she's able to. Okay. <clears throat> no, that's fine. Uh, she will join us as soon as she's able to connect. Uh, Honorable um, uh, Katra is not in the house. Eh? No, Maybe she's okay. Yeah, she. Yeah. What, yes. uh, come again. Uh, she sent uh, an apology regarding the study leave, Jefferson. Okay, but you didn't mention her apology. Another one, Chair. Okay, uh, Mr. Zungu, I saw you see your hand. Yes, Chair. Uh, I would like to turn an apology on behalf of the Executive Administrator of NSFAS, Dr. Carol Sid. He's having challenges uh, with uh, electricity in this area. Okay. No, that's fine. Um, you, you, well, we didn't invite NSFAS. I think they invited themselves. <clears throat> but we're happy that uh, Mr. Zungu is here to represent uh, Dr. Carol Lesson. <clears throat> so we let's proceed um, and get um, well, which one, Anele? King Hinza, Chairperson. King Hinza, yeah. Let's get King Hinza, uh, the Chairperson, and then the the principal will uh, will then take us through. You have got 40 minutes, so please uh, use it very efficiently. Is there there's somebody who's appearing on the screen? Can you please just switch off your video and your mic? I don't know who's that with a cap. Eh? <clears throat> it's the SRC president of King in such a. Okay. All right, uh, can we get a presentation from King Hinza? Are you ready? Yes, uh, we are ready, Chair. Good evening, Chair, and uh, good evening to all the honorable members. Thank you very much for having us. Uh, am I audible, Chair? We can hear you. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, my name is Zwilinzi Mandevo. I am the chairperson of the Council of King Itza FVT College. Uh, Chair, before I start with my presentation, let me indicate that with me, I have the deputy chairperson of council, uh, Ms. Mlambi. I also have uh, the principal. Uh, the four deputies are also here. The principal, Ms. Balfour, I also have the Deputy Principal Finance, which is Mr. Mtinso. I have the Deputy Principal Registration, which is Mr. Tlangano. I also have uh, the Deputy Principal Academic, which is Ms. Engele. I also lastly have the Deputy Principal uh, Corporate Services, which is Mr. Mbengo. So they are with me. They would uh, engage later on with any uh, engagement that we might want to have, such as uh, questions and all of those things. I thought, uh, let me firstly indicate that. In terms of the presentation, I am going to deal with the governance part, and uh, the principal, Ms. Balfour, would then deal with the other areas as you have requested us, Chair. I will ask uh, my colleagues uh, that side who are working on the presentation to assist me by projecting the presentation so that I can start. Uh, is it projected? 
his project. Yeah, you can continue. All right, thank you very much. As indicated, we are. I am from the King Inza FET College, and thank you for the invitation that you have invited us to really come here and um, present what is happening currently within the college. We really appreciate that. Uh, our presentation is structured as followed. I would briefly talk around our vision and mission, uh, indicate our values as a college, uh, give a brief background of the college, very brief because of the time limit, of course, and talk to issues of governance. And the principal will deal with the management issues. Uh, the principal would also deal with issues around financial management and uh, the issue that you have raised around saving the academic year, the 2020 academic year. So that's how our presentation is structured. We are really an institution uh, that uh, its vision is uh, to recognize training academic and technical excellency uh, to respond to the social and economic needs of our communities. Our mission uh, it's a rural uh, TVET college but offers uh, that offers quality education and training that will equip our students with essential skills to contribute to the development of our communities uh, for South African economic growth. So those are our mission and vision as a college, our values are Ubuntu, uh, service excellence, professionalism, integrity, uh, sustainable partners, partnerships. Those are our values. Uh, we are a college that you probably all know that we are uh, located in the Eastern Cape province uh, within the Amatole district municipality. Uh, our campuses are within the two local municipalities within the Amatole district, which is Mbashe and Mumma local municipalities. We have five campuses within uh, these uh, municipalities. We have the Gwentane campus, uh, the Dutua campus, the Willow Vale campus, the Teco campus, and lastly, the Umsobonvu campus. Our administrative uh, center is uh, situated approximately six kilometers outside of the town of Batawet, uh, or any affected known as Iku. In terms of the status of our council in issues of governance, we are 99% constituted. Uh, we have all the five ministerial appointees. We have uh, all the four additional appointees as appointed by council. Uh, we have the principal uh, representative from the academic board, a uh, representative from uh, lecturing staff, a representative from the uh, administrative or support staff. We also have the SRC president and secretary sitting in the council. We have not yet uh, finalized or uh, the, the donor member position. So that has not been filled, and that's what makes us 99% uh, filled. In terms of the skills that are required, uh, the skills that uh, we have within council, we have myself as the chairperson of the council. I am a professor of leadership or public leadership by trade, uh, based at the School of Public Leadership within the University of Stellenbosch. Uh, the deputy chairperson, Ms. Mshambi Nekashe, she is a chartered accountant by training, uh, dealing mainly with asset management, supply chain management, payroll management, tax, and financial management. Some of the members, we also have Mr. Fichane, who is who has 40 years, just over 40 years of experience in artisan, uh, doing a lot of work in terms of quality control within government constructions uh, until recently. We also have Mr. Masire, who is a project management uh, specialist in IT uh, governance and compliance specialist, uh, security standards uh, specialist in IT and software uh, testing, packaging, and releasing specialist. We also have uh, Ms. Perpetua, who represent uh, the academic uh, staff or the lecturing staff within the college who brings uh, her expertise in uh, teaching and also assessment and evaluation of our land. Also in our, if we can move to the next slide, uh, colleague, we then have also Mr. Ncho, uh, who is an engineering technologist uh, responsible for research and development within the council. 
We have uh, Mr. Kanyile, who is a human resource policy development and analyst expert. We also have Prof. Nyamurinde, who is a specialist uh, based at the University of Forte, who deal with human resource uh, development. We also have uh, Mrs. Bugwe Fokazi, who is an accountant, a member of uh, Black, an associate member of the South African Institute for Chartered Accountant. Uh, she also deals with uh, general, uh, she specializes in those issues and regulations, in more specifically in terms of disaster of late years, one of her interests. We also have uh, Mr. Tasamba, who is an admitted attorney of the High Court of South Africa. We also have uh, Mr. Masiko, who is a digital communication and marketing uh, expert and also deals with public relations as part of her expertise, his expertise. Uh, in terms of uh, meetings, we council since council was uh, fully constituted in October last year. Uh, we have uh, had uh, all meetings as per the regulations. We have uh, engaged even during the lockdown uh, via this platform, the virtual platform in our meetings with different uh, stakeholders in terms of college committees and also the council itself, uh, having also special meetings. The interface between council or governance and management, we on a quarterly basis, the principal reports to council on the activities of the college. So this is a standing item in our meetings. And also as and when there is a need to engage with either myself as uh, the chairperson of council or any other portfolio committee chair within council, he would then engage with those uh, stakeholders. So the, for now, I, I just want to stop there and allow uh, the principal to then uh, continue with the management component. Ms. Balfour will then take it from there and engage around the management component. Thank you very much. Before we go to the, the can we please uh, just uh, use your mic? Okay, I was saying before we go to management, can we exhaust the, the governance issues if there are any governance challenges as we ask that please brief us uh, about any governance challenges that you have thank you very much chair uh, in our last slide of the presentation would we'll also deal with those but uh, briefly i can indicate in terms of uh, management or in terms of relationship within council members we have uh, very good relationships uh, we always have full, full quorums in the meetings uh, some of the challenges that we are experiencing are really uh, in our engagement with internal stakeholders as challenges for example uh, with uh, nsfas that brings the issue of instability uh, to the institution that we're to deal with. Uh, the feeling of critical position, that's also one thing that also challenges us as a governance institute, as a governance uh, institute within the college, because we have to uh, try and make sure that the college operates optimally when there is actually challenges in terms of feeling critical position. And uh, lastly, the lack of infrastructure. Uh, that also frustrates us as an oversight and governance structure uh, because there are limitations in terms of what we can do. But other than that, uh, everything is going uh, well so far. Chair, thank you. Okay. Uh, can we get the uh, management issues? Can you just uh, switch on your mic, your, your, your video? Come again. Can you please, can you please switch on your video? Unfortunately, I'm connecting through the phone chat because of the network problem where I'm staying. So okay. you cannot see my face. All right, Good. continue. Okay. Then 
then the, the deputy principals, there are four deputy principals which are also permanently appointed. Then the question that follows is the interface between management and labor. As prescribed by the labor relations, management recognizes all recognized unions. And then there are cordial engagements with the union on all matters of mutual interest that need stakeholder attention. And the DP corporate services is the one responsible for union related matters. And there have been relations that we have been trained between the college management and how in particular due to various reasons that they raised in the meeting with the management. Then on, on student enrollment, the college currently has enrolled 3599 students, which is comprised of your national certificate vocational, semester one enrollment, and trimester one enrollment. We couldn't enroll for trimester two due to the lockdown. Are there any investigations conducted against management? For the current management, there are no investigations conducted. With the previous uh, management, there were investigations which led to the college, uh, some of the members of that management. They were dismissed due to the outcomes of the of the investigations that were were conducted. Maybe I should put the, the, the committee back to say the college was under administration up until twenty fourteen. Uh, reporting on the status of the college. The college currently is operating on a certain percent capacity due to the COVID-19 pandemic as the alert level 3 regulation. We have a scheduled plan which indicates who is coming to work and who is working from home on particular days. The college has managed to procure all the relevant equipment that is prescribed in the regulation in order for the college to comply. There are financial risk and general risk plans which are in place to monitor the implementation of the disaster management regulation. Issues that relate to financial management. The capacity of the deputy principal finance is a professional accountant who has experience in the sector and in the private sector. He is also registered as an initial test of competence with SICA. The audit outcomes of the three financial years, that is your 2016, 17, 17, 18, and then 18, 19. As indicated in 2016, 17, after the administration, the college outcome was a disclaimer. Then 2017-18, it was the qualification. 2018-19, it was also qualified. And for 2019, the process of auditing is still in progress, which will be finalized in July as the extension granted. The matters that were raised by the Auditor General, which made the college to have the qualification, I will only focus on the qualification part. The first one of the ones the building, the valuation as the sales and competence of the college assets. Validity of employee related costs, accuracy of lease pay, approval, and completeness and general expenses. In terms of the progress made in implementing the action plan, after each audit, the college would sit down and develop the action plan. 
So for the evaluation as returns and completeness of the college assets, we appointed, we advertised and then appointed a service provider. That was going to start a press the population of the asset rating staff. And so the draft standard 17 and the directive of the accounting standard board. And then, when necessary, the asset, the 2018 asset balances were restated in 2018, and the detailed assessment methodology was agreed upon with with Oscar General prior to the implementation. Then, in for 2019-20, as I have indicated, we are still being audited by Auditor General. In terms of the validity of employee-related costs, which was the second qualification, a full verification of all employees and their notches was performed by the police. The notches were traced to the validity contract and the human resources management system. When necessary, the 2018 employee costs were restated and the detailed restatement methodology was agreed upon with the Auditor General. The third part of the qualification, completeness of the general expenses, a detailed review of the 2017, 2018, and 2019 general expenditure was performed. When necessary, also the general expenses and accruals were restated with a detailed restatement methodology that was agreed upon with the Auditor General. And then a detailed check was submitted to Auditor General. Coming to the core of the, of the, of the, of the college, which is uh, the academic issue, the state of readiness for after the lockdown, we have devised the timetable for all the programs in line with the approved academic calendar. Then we have one a campus that is the Sobo Engineering Campus, which whose students have returned as from the eighth for well, first from the eleventh, I'm sorry, and then N6 and N3, and then N5, and the total number when this presentation was made it was 116 that was on site in Somoto out of the 237. But as of today, the total number that has came back is 180 students. The campuses are received to are ready to receive students, except for Tego campus which is having a challenge of limited accommodation. Tego campus is the only campus in the college that is having student residence. So for the college to be able to comply with the social distancing, we need to have alternative accommodation for the 170 students, 270 students, which cannot be accommodated during the 11th period. The college has engaged in innovative strategies during the end post COVID-19. We formed the committees as directed by the National Council with the committee, the COVID committee, which is in existence in the, in the college. And it also, we also participate in the local municipalities in the committees there so that we can give the state of the college and the state of readiness. We have also formulated, remember, Jefferson, the team designs the rural college. So we were not uh, ready for e-learning and any other form of learning except to face, to face learning. So during the COVID-19, we have to form an e-learning committee, which consisted of stakeholders, which has been mandated to transform our present teaching and learning approach into learning through educational methods. 
technology. The colleges also participated in the vast track tech training, which is an initiative by SACO. So we are one of the of the pilot colleges. Uh, the training, the trainers have yes, been trained, three lecturing staff, two admin staff, and as well as the deputy principal academic, who in turn will train the other staff members. Hundred students will also be trained when they have come there. There is a plan to do that. We, as a college, have also participated in the Cisco Webex, which is a DHT initiative on training of lecturers on those programs that are listed there. So far, only four lecturers have passed the, 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 the standards that were set by the Webex, and other lecturers were reported to have were busy presenting uh, with the training since state of our lecturers are enrolled and registered in that program. We are also part of the two-way staff partnership, which is also going to train the lecturers on top of occupational programs facilitators. The training, is, if there is a plan, it has been extended to the invitation to train also lecturers from ministerial programs, that is your national certificate, vocational and related program. As the college, we have the learning material system, which is for 2020 academic year, the college planned to provide lecturers with laptops. That was what we agreed upon in the state in 2019. That as, a, as an enabler, all the lecturers must be provided with laptops. Lecturers will also be provided with data as an enabler to teaching and learning, so as to be able to deal with the students while the certain percentage of students is not in class. The college website has been zero rated, just like any other college in the country, after the engagement at the Department of Higher Education and Training. So that students can have free access to the information that is in the college website without using any data. And then loading of NCV and Report 19 Academic and Examination Policies. Is they are also loaded in the website for for ease of access and educational documents. Creation of the college link, which is based on the lecturers' lesson presentations that were done during the lockdown. During the lockdown, so there are many innovative ways of making sure that they are students and lecturers are kept busy despite the challenges that were there. There are also publisher programs and then subject tasks which with previous question papers and marking guidelines which have been loaded on the college website for free access to the students. During the lockdown, WhatsApp groups were created, program groups were created, and some are functional and will still continue even beyond the full COVID. The college was saying the trainer team will proceed to train the lecturers throughout our campuses. A training plan for lecturers on e-learning is available with the prioritization of the lecturers with the comorbidity. We have about 18 lecturers that are affected during this level three who will be working from home. So the training will focus on them, prioritize them, so that by the time the students are coming next week, uh, those lecturers are able to use and to teach the students remotely. Purpose was to use all the time of the lockdown stages 
training lecturers on e-learning. Challenges that we experience as a college. They are not limited to this. We just uh, prioritize the, the few. There's no data and network for some of the staff members and students. During the long time when these uh, WhatsApp groups were formed, when all these initiatives were done, there was a, a huge cry, especially from the student component and also from lecturers, that they, they need data so that they are able to do any type of work that they were asked to do. There were also negative influences among students, political structures within campuses. The issue of, of WhatsApp groups started at a high note, but as time goes on, it, the numbers were dwindling due to this negative influence from the political structures which are in, within the college, within the campuses. Devices for students remain a major challenge. As a college, we cannot afford to buy devices for students. As the minister has pronounced that the students that will be covered are those that are NHS beneficiaries. So this one remains a, a huge challenge. When students come, the majority of the students, which are more than 2,000, are not NHS beneficiaries are going to uh, challenge this issue. We are seated in Amatole District Municipality, which is the South Second area. And we that affected the quality adversely in terms of the financing, because we have to provide water for all the companies we have to buy from the private provider. The connectivity is also a major challenge much as the college is using uh, the space as a connecting uh, agent, but in terms of the network, the networks are not strong because now there is a high demand from the students in terms of the connectivity, in terms of them getting the Wi-Fi. So hence there is a, a, a strengthening process that is being undertaken by state. We have limited college residences to accommodate students. Only one campus of, of, of Indiza is having student residence. And it is the oldest campus. It needs the major innovations and a lot of money is being spent there. There are critical vacant posts which have not been filled because of the 53% threshold, which we, when the vacancy uh, were vacated by officials, either by being promoted or moving to other colleges. Those vacancies remain vacant, vacant so much as they are critical. That affects the performance, especially of the academics and also some of the finance and also in the government, uh, in the government office. Those both remain uh, vacant. That takes me to the to the end of the presentation for Kingdom. But I think I have covered all the questions that were posed to the college. Thank you very much. Jefferson? Principal Jefferson of the council. Um, I think you 
you did very well. Uh, and you expect that the next one. You can't hear this. Uh, you are what? Uh, interest uh, program and okay, Anela is not there. Can we get a Jefferson? Uh, I'm here, Jefferson. Okay, Anela was speaking. Oh. Yes, she disappeared. Uh, who's next? I'm uh, Jefferson, who's the Jefferson, we support. Huh? We're supposed to get uh, the SRC of uh, King Inza. Okay. Uh, uh, SRC, let's give you. Uh, I did not factor that in the in the calculation of the time. Good evening. So. <coughs> Good evening. Yeah, but who speaks without giving an opportunity to speak? It's the president, Jefferson. Yes, uh, yes, the sir. President invited to speak you don't just come in and speak please i'm trying to explain the issue of time because i see that we're going to have some difficulty uh, uh, <clears throat> so yeah but if you can come in i think the next ones will have to give them 30 minutes including the src so go ahead uh, just be brief eh? okay so okay. Whoever is, uh, whoever is sharing with us their screen, uh, the management of King Inter can take them off. Can come again, sir. Hello. Hello. Come again, sir. Connections. Hello. Chairperson says that. Um, the person that you're with must share your presentation. Can you share your presentation on the screen? Okay, so we are working on that. Uh, my humble apologies. Uh, I will be attending this meeting alone due to my secretary didn't have a means of transport to attend this meeting. Um, I forwarded this uh, presentation to Mr. Atler earlier on. He should be uploading it now on the screen. The chair said you can present. Okay, so uh, we are under governance. Uh, governance, there is a status of council. Now, the status of council is not substantial in terms of equitate support and primary to the primary stakeholder and its deployees, the SRC. This means that uh, the council is, is, is not supporting us. It's, 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 it's not working like hand and glove with us, you see. Therefore, we refuse to contravene in any form of protest, but simply to report such issues to a, a superior and a higher board. Uh, the, the council itself uh, is not really working for us. It lacks in communication with the SRC and other students you, you need. And only until and only and only until we start to protest and and make riots will only our visions and aims be heard they do not follow they don't do follow ups on issues regarding the students they only come when we go or, or they only listen to us when we go up to the up to academic block to view for them, I mean, for, for, for them to view our, our, our concerns. Uh, this is due, <clears throat> this is due to, to backslacking in some of, um, uh, how can I put it, the members of the council, because the principal doesn't do a checkup on them. It does, the principal is there, 
but the principal is always out of town. When we go up there to the admin block, the principal is never there unless we start a march or start to protest uh, or we resort to school vandalism. Now, in many campuses of uh, King Ginza, we have about five campuses. Now, we are all facing different uh, challenges, but mostly are similar and common. Uh, in Aidujwa, there, there's been progress in, in, in academics, in, uh, in sport, in this, uh, during this uh, pandemic uh, state we're having. There is going to be <coughs> a substantial uh, feedback, I, 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 I propose. Uh, in other campuses like um, uh, Tuwijwa and there is Willow Vale. In Willow Vale, there are many challenges there. There are many, 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 many challenges. Okay, I will touch up on the on the problem issues. We are having problems, yeah. In in Msobomvu campus, Msobomvu campus hasn't received any any form any form of income due to NASFAS. Uh, I, I will not dwell much on such until the point is been made. Uh, let me go to point number 1.2, the, the skill profile on, on council member. Principal, Ms. Balfour, currently, <clears throat> according to officer of King Inza, has visited only one, one institution and met all institutions. Sorry, sir. Sorry. Continue. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm appointing, sir, uh, a point here. Can I? Yeah. I, I so, sorry, sir. There is a problem here with the internet, sir. The internet is very slow. The internet is very slow, so there's been a breakage on and off there. We, we can hear you. Okay, sir, if, we, if, we, if you're clear. The person who's disturbing us is Mokhale. Oh, oh I'm, sorry. I'm, so, I, I, I'm sorry for that, uh, Chair. Please mute your mic. We did say when we started, everybody must mute their mic. Now you're disturbing us. Now you're wasting our time. Okay, continue. <sighs> Uh, stu okay, student claim to say that she is always out of town when they when they try to contact her regarding their problems, their basic needs. Uh, she is ne she never returns to them to attend those specific issues. Uh, ever since she has been deployed as principal of the college. It is said that she does not meet the student needs and requirements and does not engage well with the students and the and the problems beyond campus management. Let us move on to point number four, the deputy principals. Now, deputy principals, uh, we have members, deputy principal members, Mr. Mbengo, Mr. Nchangano, Mr. Mtinso, Ms. Sangele, are as so far not helpful as expected by the students in all five campuses. These views have been uh, <clears throat> projected by the students itself, themselves. Uh, I collected all this information from the, 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 the current uh, presidents. So each campus has its own presidents. So I gathered all this information from the campus uh, presidents. Moving on to point number five, managers. Mr. Pinkani, student support manager, say, <clears throat> says that the induction process 
of the new SRC will not take place due to COVID-19 epidemic because resorts and hotels are closed, gathering is prohibited. I quote on his message that was sent uh, to, uh, to, to, to a WhatsApp group uh, regarding uh, induction processes. Uh, he, he said so, I quote, you are, invi you are invited to be part of the discussions with the parliament. Great opportunity for you and us for induction uh, emoji disappointment. So I fail to understand as, um, uh, as, 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 um, as a primary stakeholder, I fail to understand how can I serve how can I save my students without being inducted? How can I know who to tell, who to, who to ask for need, who to ask for help if I haven't been inducted? Even if it's not going out to private resorts or hol holiday inns or, or hotels, I know they are not open yet due to this pandemic uh, year. But we can simply open up, uh, let's say, for instance, go to a hall. We are plus minus uh, 20 or 25 students uh, from the SRC just to brief the students on who or where or how to tackle such issues. Uh, let me move on. <clears throat> let me move on. Uh, this is Ms. Mafenuka of the financial head officer. Uh, it is said that uh, <clears throat> she is always unavailable for updates regarding NSFAS issues when needed mostly by the students. And all campus do not have a bursary officer to appeal their concerns. This means that we do not have a bursary office in every in every campus of King Inza. We need a bursary office because Ms. Mafenuka up there in the admin block is failing us. Every time we take a march up there in Msobongu campus, we are the closest. We go by foot to Msobongu, to, to Ibeka, to the admin block to address our issues because when we write or email them, they fail to come back to us. They fail uh, <clears throat> to give us feedback or, or progress. So we end up marching up to the admin block uh, for them to hear our cry. Now, point number 1.3, like regularity of meetings. Meetings are always done by short notice. Even this meeting, I got it by short notice. I haven't been inducted. I haven't been uh, properly uh, introduced into this um, SRC. Uh, I, I don't wanna speak much because uh, I know I'm a leader at the end of the day. But yeah, at the end of the day, I need direction from them from the superiors. Okay. Moving on. Um, <clears throat> all right, President of the SSRC, your time has expired. So we've got the rest of your presentation. Uh, so <clears throat> you're going to come to the concerns around governance. So we've got your presentation. We'll yes, go through sir. it. Can we move on to the next image? We are running behind schedule now. So we have to be quick, quick. Who's the next presenter? Anele? It's, it's, uh, it's Opie Chepeson. Okay, Opie. Opie. All right. All right, Obit, can we hand over to you? Chepeson. 
is a secretary SRC secretary from I think it's Opit College if I'm not sure. <coughs> Okay, so you see, can can hear me because it's not responding. Uh, yeah, I think he is using his phone. Um, can I respond to that, Mapulani? Can I respond to that, Mapulani? Hello. Okay. Hello. All right. Bukhale. Yeah, Bukhale, listen now. You are you are really disturbing us. Can you please put your mic on? Otherwise, we'll request you to leave the meeting. Right. Let's move on. I'm sure he's listening. Please, Wahale, uh, switch off your mic. We've been disturbing us and we do not have enough time. If you want to participate, switch off your mic and listen. If you don't, just leave the meeting. Okay? <clears throat> All right. Uh, can we proceed? Let's get the chair to give a brief overview and the report on governance. Chairperson of uh, Orbit College. The chair is not in. The principal is the principal in. The principal is not in. Thank you. Can we move to West Call? Chairperson. The chairperson of West. Call is he in the house. Yes. Chairperson, Orbit College. Okay. Chairperson, it's Orbit College. Can you hear us? Mm -hmm. Well. Chairperson. Okay. Who's speaking? It's Orbit College. Can you hear us? Yes, I identify. Okay. Who are you? Chairperson, this is Dr. Murantua from Obit Tibet College. Who are you? Obit Tibet College, Chairperson. Chairperson of Obit Tibet College. No, no. What's your name? Obit College is not your, your name. What is your name? Uh, thank you, Chairperson. My name is Kabelo Murantua from Obit Tibet College. Okay, Chair. Switch on your camera, so all right. Switch on, on your, 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 your video. Okay. Thank you, Chairperson. It has been switched on. Um, Chairperson, let me thank you for this opportunity to make uh, this presentation. Obit Tivet College is based in the Northwest Mr. Province. Can you switch on your mic, please? Yeah, his mic is on, Che. My mic is on, Che. Chairperson, may I continue? I'm saying a video, not a uh, mic. Like we can we can see you. The video. the video is on as well. <clears throat> hey, it looks like there's a problem here. Uh, or a problem with the orbit. Uh, mm. All right. Chair, we can see the video as well as uh, the presentation. Just pro proceed. No. Uh, just proceed. Uh, I think we're wasting time now. Okay. 
continue. Let's let's hear what you have to say. Chairperson, okay, proceed. Chairperson, thank you very much for for the invite. We based at Obit Tibet College in the Northwest Province. The Northwest Province is in Bojanala, and the Tibet College is in Bojanala. And I'm joined here by the, the by the principal and the four deputies, as well as the campus manager. I'm also joined by uh, the deputy chairperson of council. Chairperson, it's my pleasure to announce that council is fully constituted with a total of 16 members appointed in terms of section six, uh, 16 of the CET Act. 60% of our members chairperson are external members. And then as council, we continue to perform all our functions which are necessary to govern this uh, public college. Chairperson, thanks. In terms of the skill profile of the council, council in consultation with the minister has appointed members with variety of skills, Chairperson, um, in finance, accounting and auditing, banking and commerce, labor relations management, human resources management, corporate law, education, informatics and, and computer sciences, as well as administration. Chair, we also have a, a acting president of SRC and the secretary general of SRC. We've got quite a vast overlap of skills within, within council to complement the necessary requirements to ensure effective governance. We've got members with two members uh, with PhDs. We've got four members with master's degree. The other is a, master, a PhD candidate within this court. We've got three members who hold uh, honors degrees, two members with higher diplomas, two members with BTEC degrees, and a member with a diploma. Two of our members are students uh, studying towards their qualification chair. In terms of regularity of the meetings, Chair, um, we've got committees, that is audit and risk, executive committee, condition of employment, finance and planning. Meetings are held once a quarter and additional meetings such as special meetings and emergency meetings were, were, were held at the discretion of the chairperson and the, and the college principal as, as and when needed. So in terms of the council induction manual, we, we have headed the advice in terms of specification of how often the meeting will be held and uh, in terms of special seat, uh, 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 special meetings when and how to call the special meetings so uh, relating to the concerns around governance uh, chair uh, we um, managing, managing stakeholder relationships with particular reference to unprecedented strikes by members of SRC was a major challenge to cancer and subsequently to governance of this college. Um, the major issues of contention were the, the issues surrounding the Rokhota, which collapsed earlier in the previous year, and the academic exclusion of one of the students who happened to be the SRC president. But overall, Chairperson, the matter has been receiving attention, and I would like to ensure that Chairperson of an honorable member of the portfolio committee that council is doing all to improve the internal relations between between the parties but it's worth noting that there has been internal issues there has been internal challenges particularly with regard to 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 SRC and um, um, around in the issue of holding of Lokota. this has become a concern to 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 to, to cancel and also had, had an impact on governance of the college. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, sorry. Interface between governance and management. Council and management has integrated on various levels to ensure that governance and ethical compliance of the law and regulation transparency and disclosure as well as accountability. As Council, we've worked on the Auditor General report as a baseline of interaction with management. Council has also firmly realigned the reporting methods to be consistent with the strategic plan to meet the strategic objectives of the, of the college. This realignment has been adopted during the first ordinary Council sitting and the play templates have been approved by Council. So in, the, so in essence, the interaction with the management and in all committees of Council um, is therefore aligned to this resolution. Um, 
this resolution has also been uh, made in line with the council induction manual, which has been um, very clear in terms of what type of, of reports are needed and how should council interact with senior management. With regard to the investigation, Chairperson, at the moment there is no investigation conducted against Council and or litigation instituted against Council. Thank you, Chairperson, and I would like to apologize for the earlier glitch in technology. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Let me hand over to the principal. Okay, principal. Thank you, Chairperson, and good, good evening. This slide I would not cover. The chairperson has of council has already covered this chart of our geographical spread in the interest of time. Second slide on status of senior management chairperson. I would like to share that we've got a sound management. The principal of the organization who is me, Dika Mukwena, was appointed on May 2018 and assumed duty on July 2018. We have four deputy principals within the following portfolios, finance, corporate services, as well as academic affairs. Sorry, I said four, instead of saying three. My apologies about that, Chairperson. We've got two campus managers who are permanently appointed and one acting campus manager at our Mangue campus. Chairperson interface between management, students and labor. We are pleased to share with you this evening that we've got a very sound and healthy relationship between management and labor to start with. As listed, those four unions are the ones which are actively operating at the college across all our four sites, which include the central office. Furthermore, to that chairperson, we wish to share with you this evening that we have a direct communication line with the said unions. Management has also established a work forum which is informed by the Labor Relations Act, where we've got meetings with the four unions. We also wish to state, Chair, that the meetings which are indicated above, which take place at a central level, they are furthermore cascaded down at campus level. So there is that a seamless communication which starts at campus level and therefore escalated to the central structure. Next slide that I'm presenting, Chair, where social partners are also consistently involved in, in the recruitment and selection process of employees, which is therefore informed by the public service regulations and applicable collective agreements. This on its own, it just establish a harmonious environment where you don't end up having objections of employees who are appointed because the unions or social partners are part and package of the process from its initial stages. Health and wellness, a very important program in the organization. Social partners, they play a very critical and important role in that. The department is currently working on the post provisioning norms. There is a communication that is constantly taking place between management of the institution as well as the social partners, so that we, we are able to have a very seamless and peaceful process of placement of lecturers and staff at this new post which will be created and we wish to say that up to this point there is a very harmonious process that is taking place we wish to say the, the said 
general sound relationship between management and labor. This can be attested by the relative peaceful organizational climax that, climax that we have had over the years. Now, interface between management and student. Let's unpack activities. SRC training in 2019 on those set days from the 8th to the 10th of March, we had SRC training. Mid-year review on the 19th to the 21st of July. We, the president of the SRC and the principal will have the engagement to engage and discuss activities and student concerns and affairs and prog progression in terms of, or progress in terms of studies. SRC and student formulation with the head of Kotla 18 to the 20th of October. And student form as well as student formations were part of that the Kotla. Okay. Chair. Okay, there's someone talking in the behind the screens. Uh, please mute. It's a Razak who's disturbing us. Please mute. Continue. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, SRC strike. We wish to share and raise this one as well in our presentation that one challenge that we had was that in terms of our organizational culture is that there would be a Lokhotla, which is a common practice over the years. But with this particular Lokhotla of 2019, on the said dates, which are 2018 to the 20th of October, the Lokhotla did not, not flow very well. There were issues raised by SRC. Unfortunately, on the 21st of October, which was therefore a Monday, that there was an unannounced strike across all campuses, which was somehow a shock to the population of the college, including other students who were not part of the Lokhotla, but more shock to management at large. Okay, that strike on the third day, there was a confrontation between the private security company, which therefore led to some students to be injured. SRC reps and community members, 20, fast forward to 2020, the strike was able to be well managed at other campuses, which would be Bretts as well as Rustenberg, but we saw the extension of the strike into 2020 at Mankwe campus. So there was that strike at the said campus, and now it therefore intensified, and there were also members of the community who then participated in the strike. Okay, we pass on that one. Student enrollments. We are pleased to share with the house the total number of targets that we had planned according to a strategic plan which has been approved by the minister. NCV, our target was 3,280. Actual that we have enrolled is 3,897. We had a various in the positive of 617. I will not bog you down into details of the programs to, pay, to break them down as they appear there. I will just take in terms of the uh, NCV business studies that we've got 1,335. We had a variance in the positive of 256. NCV service studies, our target was 490 and to have a, a variance of 162 where we've got a very good outlier in terms of our figures, which, which is around tourism, where we've got 81 students registered in that program, more than our target. It's a very good indicator. We are in the tourism band. We are surrounded by a number of tourism institutions and entertainment centers, including Sun City and other lodges. So that outlier talks very well to our program qualification mix. I move to the next slide, engineering programs. 
our total then of our target was 3,219, our variance is around 997, our outlier then in terms of our target, target sorry, was a mechanical program within the level of N3 to N, N1 or N, N1 to N3, we've got 210 students more than our target. Same applies, Chen, it talks very well to our local economic needs. Our um, surroundings, we've got number of mines there. So the mechanical talks to the number of um, employers which are around us. So we are quite comfortable with that outlier. N4 to N6, we registered in the negative 44, less than our target of 262, we had 218. But electrical, we did very well. Business studies. Principal, can you can you uh, move faster? Thank you, thank you, thank you. We can see the thank numbers. You. We don't need any analysis. Just move okay. faster so that you conclude in the next five minutes. Okay. Okay. There are no investigations conducted against management. Then, um, in terms of the college administration, because the question itself was not specific. We, we tried to go broad and cover a number of areas around HR. We are happy to share that we've got 416 PESAL staff members who are, who are on PESAL and 19 on college council. Those are the numbers. We move on. In terms of race distribution, 93% African, 0.23 and the four, so forth and so on. As, we indi as I indicated there on the screen. Staff complement by age. There's the staff complement by age, which indicates um, that we've got 9.6 between the cohort of 55 to 64. Thank you, Chair. Administration, if you can't manage leave, you are losing money. It is important for us also to be looking at the leave because that's where performance of the college is determined. So this slide talks about our capacity and capability to manage that space. I will not go into details of those figures which are there. Thank you, Chair. Performance of the college, uh, those who are DPSA performance management system, PM, PMDS for support staff integrated for Quality manage, management system for lecturing staff. We are applying this strictly so that it translates to the performance of the college. Our results will talk to that part later on in this presentation. Outbreak of the COVID. We just to touch on the most important ones. We've got committees. Our committees include students on how to go about unfolding the protocols and making sure that the environment is safe. If I move too fast, Chair, it does also indicate so that I don't move, move that fast. Summary on national student financial aid scope, we covered 2019 to 2020, that our remittance allowance for 2019, we, have, we had 65 million. Number of students which we are able to cover was 5,465. Um, dispersed allowance, 55 million for 4,801. The, the, there's a note there down which explains the above two figures. The second slide covers 2020. Remittance allowance for 47 million. We were able to disperse allowance to the value of 31.7 million, and that is for semester one, trimester one, and the NCV, which is for entire year. Other semesters, as we know, challenges which we have at the, at the, at the moment, we don't have two sem at one semester and the trimester two and trimester three, we don't have those. Our performance, which we are very proud to share, Chair, NCV academic performance, and I wish to state that I think in the country we are amongst the best performing institutions when it comes to academic performance. Those are our figures, 2015, 70, 2017, 78%, 2017, 84, 
so forth and so on. 2019, we performed around 75%, which is our certification rate is a very good one. And our target on average, based on average, we are at 73%, which is our target. Report 191 Business Studies Certification. 2015, as it goes then, I'll quickly zoom on 2018, 19, and therefore our target in the interest of time. 2018, 73%. There was a decline there in 2019 to 68%. However, our target is peaked to at 73% for this year. Engineering studies, same report 191. 2018, 58%. There was a decline in that to at 42. Our target is at 58. We have a, a new program for students who are joining the organization who would who'd, who'd not be having the relevant qualification. So we give them a pre-entry. This program started in 2018. So 2018, we had 47 of them, 47 certificate rates, and 2019, we it improved from 47 to 56. <coughs> uh, I don't know if I'm doing well, Chair, with time. Please do indicate so that I can cut other slides. Uh, financial management, we are quite happy to share with you, Chair, that we've got a competent and capable capable workforce headed by deputy principal academic uh, sorry deputy principal finance consists of three divisions we've got finance division supply chain management asset and the number of people within those units are indicated there are 10 appointed nine in the supply chain management five in the asset management with one vacancy across these those three uh, departments now a, a big question audit improvement plan on issues which have been raised by AG. Now, can I just pose a picture and find out if uh, how, how can I approach this one? Because indicated that I must be concerned and take note of time. Can I just indicate only the concern raised by the auditor, AG? without going into detail up around our action plan. May I check with you, Chair, through you? Yeah, yeah, please just do that quickly. Okay. Thanks, Chair. Points concerned or points which were raised by the AG is trade and other receivable from exchange transactions, which talks to doubtful debts. And AG was then saying college policy um, needs to be is incorrect. We need to adjust that. Our action plan talks to our adjustment, what we've done, and we're pleased to say we had 95% of coverage of that one. Overstatement of student data from our NASFAS, which are therefore a liability because of that overstatement. Payable from exchange transactions, so as another point raised, we are at 80% of sorting that one. Inventory was also a point of concern. Uh, com uh, what was exactly a point of concern there? Completeness and existence of stock based on stock counts, especially accuracy of the costing of inventory in terms of lower of cost or current replacement cost. Projects, we, at one, at one point I wish to indicate that we are very well in doing projects serving the community, but it then became a problem when it comes to this point of being raised by the auditor to say our projects, the closing balance of projects does not reconcile due to differences identified in the movement. We have sorted that one out, details are there in our action plan, 100% sorted out, quite happy with that one. Commitments, differences identified with regards, commitments indicated in the commitments register and the disclosure notes for commitments. Errors, omissions of commitments in the disclosure note. 
95%, only 5% that needs to be covered, then we are happy that we have addressed um, concerns about our um, raise by the auditor. Accumulated surplus, limitation of scope in terms of prior adjustment disclosed in the accumulated surplus, cash flow statements, material differences identified in the cash flow statement. 95 95% coverage, our action plan indicates in detail what we have done. Um, in conclusion to that one of finance, financial management, stable measures. We have a council have approved policies which were primarily uh, developed by DHET. We are happy with that progress. Audit steering committee is there to adopt standard operating processes from audit action plans. Finance department trained on financial statements. Then the other two and the other three bullets, I will not go through them, uh, not meaning that they are not that important. We wish to state under finances that the college is in a very sound financial position. As SIG, SIG, we have 43 million in the account, 41 million has been approved. The other one is still waiting for approval. Total expenditure 587, commitment that we are targeting that by September, end of September 2020, we would have spent 29 million of the SIG project. We've got tenders under number line number six that indicates of projects which we have in the pipeline, which are addressing infrastructure and other challenges within the institution. Okay, principal, I'm going to have to come in now. Thank you, sir. Stop you from proceeding now. The rest of the presentation, we will look at it. Um, <clears throat> I think that is the last one, saving the academic year. Can we get quickly the SRC to present? In the next eight minutes, uh, SRC president is he in the house. The SRC president is, is not in the house. Uh, can we move? <clears throat> okay, let's move and then get uh, a West call. Chair, quickly. He just he just joined now. Chair, the SRC president. SRC. Okay. Can we get the SRC president? Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Uh, as I was introduced, uh, my name is Calvin Pala, and I'm the um, acting president of Obit Tibet College. Um, I'm not alone. I'm with my secretary general, um, Mr. Moses Bukhali. And here I have a presentation, um, uh, Obit Tibet College SRC presentation to the Portfolio Committee, Higher Education, Science and Technology. And I will, will just be reporting, uh, presenting on a few, um, on, a few uh, on a few pillars uh, of in, in our presentation. Now, the first one that we'd like to present on, it is uh, the COVID-19 state, state of readiness uh, in our campuses. Um, as we can all see, the face opening of the Tibet sector on the popular um, save the academic, hashtag save the academic year. Uh, we all ask ourselves one common question, and that is, are we readily equipped? Um, um, following in some of the aspects, we would like to talk about, we would like to talk in terms of the state of readiness of our campuses. Uh, post uh, the COVID-19 um, lockdown. Um, in terms of health and safety of students, 
um, since the phase return had had begun, engineering N3 and N6 students have started with their classes uh, from the 10th of June 2020. The college have put in place measures according to how the minister ha has prescribed. Uh, the college have appointed screeners as prescribed. Um, uh, the students who have returned to campus have received masks face shields and were inducted about their health and safety on campuses. 70% uh, ethanol based sanitizing uh, dispensers are installed at all points of entry at campuses and um, the correct spacing in terms of uh, social distancing uh, in classes is adhered to. Um, in terms of responsive measures, uh, in terms of the COVID-19 um, um, virus. Um, as a student representative council, we are not happy about the, res the responsive measures that are put in place by the college. Um, since the students have returned to the campus from the 10th of June 2020, we have identified one positive case of COVID-19 at um, one of our campuses uh, where a staff member who possibly had been in contact with the students had has tested positive. Uh, the point of our unhappiness is that students were only told to return home immediately after the case was confirmed positive, whilst the staff member was coming to campus with symptom with symptoms, sorry, um, of the virus and was helping in distributing the the the, uh, the prescribed uh, PPE. And then uh, in terms of um, student financial aid, um, since the college has migrated from paying allowances of students directly from their bank accounts uh, to paying via the NESFAS uh, wallet, students who are approved by the NESFAS has been receiving uh, their allowances monthly. However, uh, there has been some inconsistencies whereby students would receive rental allowance instead of travel allowance and students has um, has been struggling with withdrawing or cashing in their vouchers at some of um, the retailers so this is these are some of the problems which we have been facing in terms of um, student um, financial aid um, in terms of academic support our students have lost a lot of time um, due to the lockdown and with the circumstances we are facing today whereby cases are being identified at a time whereby we are supposed to be sailing in terms of um, the hashtag save the academic year. This means that um, this means that uh, there will surely be academic casualties. And now the biggest question we ask ourselves is that what will the department do in terms of um, all the all the casualties we will find um, having uh, in terms of uh, the next academic year? Um, as we all aware that the fourth industrial revolution has been has been a key mandate from all sectors of government um, the college has resolved that students should be provided with laptops um, to help them to study even when they are at home um, um, an e-learning implementation plan has been uh, submitted by by the e-learning task team to the academic board and we are awaiting the college council um, to approve. Um, in terms of um, um, our last uh, pillar, which is uh, student accommodation, um, um, our Rastenbeck and Breast Campus are still without student accommodation. Uh, we still have students who are traveling from as far as 30 to 40 kilometers um, to their respective campuses. And this is a this is a toll for some for some for some they wake up at dawn to catch an early public transport. Um, that alone is a mountain toll as some students um, 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 to get to their campuses, they, they arrive at the campuses tired and they won't be able to, to fully uh, concentrate in terms of their classes. Um, only one of our campus, uh, which is um, the third campus, which is uh, the Mangwe campus, has student residents which only which really needs um, a great deal of maintenance because students don't feel safe. And with the current situation of COVID-19, residents um, um, residents needs to be attended um, um, in order to ensure the safety 
of um, our students. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is what we have uh, from the Student Representative Council of Obi Tibet College um, for today. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> um, President. I think you did well in terms of time and content. I think that's what we expect. Brief to the point, highlight the critical issues. Uh, can we get to where's call? Thank you, Chair. And good evening, honorable members. My name is Tebogo uh, Mota. I am the interim chair or chairperson of the Western Tibet College. Chairperson, I'm not alone. I am accompanied by the council of uh, some council of the some members of the council at the college. Um, therefore, the delegation is uh, consisting of uh, Professor Nguenya, Dr. Kumalo, uh, Ms. Rupnarien, Ms. Lemale, and uh, also Ms. Kava. In terms of exco of the college, Dr. Mashele, the acting principal, is here. Uh, Mr. Ali, the Deputy Principal uh, Finance or CFO, is also here. Mr. Parker, the Deputy Principal Corporate Services. And also Mr. Mukhosi, the Deputy Principal um, Academic. We also have uh, Mr. Kasinde, who is the lecturing staff <coughs> uh, representative. Chair, we have got also present in the meeting this evening the SRC uh, members. Chairperson, can you just shoot straight to the issues? You know, the introduction is going to waste a lot of time. Already you, we don't have enough time. Get straight into the governance issues and the principal will get into the management issues. Thank you, Chairperson. I will do so. In terms of governance, uh, Chair, the Western Tibet College is fully constituted because we have already 16 appointed members, five ministerial appointees who have been appointed in terms of the Continuing Education and Training Act, uh, Act number 16 of uh, uh, 2006 as amended in 2012, section 10.4. Chair, we also have uh, four additional external council members also appointed in, this, in, in terms of the same act and also as amended. As I said in my introduction, we have the principal, the academic board rep, lecturing staff representative, support staff rep, student representative council, which is actually two members today, the president and the deputy. We also have a donor member chairperson, uh, and Chair, in terms of the skills profile of the council, allow me not to go into details. Uh, needless to say, we have got uh, a well-qualified council, which is very, very capable in terms of uh, uh, um, conducting duties and also carrying the mandate as per the act, as, as I mentioned above. So Chair, I will from here, zoom straight into the issue of regularity of meetings. I take it that uh, the skills uh, profiles and also the skill set of the council members, members can, can indulge on them. And then perhaps during the question and answer slot, then we can perhaps pick up questions there. Chair, in terms of the regularity of meetings, our meetings at West, Western uh, Tibet College Okay, as contained in the standard Tibet stature. Um, so far, uh, we have had uh, four council meetings, one being ordinary and three being uh, special meetings. And perhaps, Chair, a question might, 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 might come to say, why did we have uh, special council meetings uh, 
uh, about three, three of them. You know, Chair, there were, there were a number of challenges when we started, and therefore we had to put fires down so as to address those particular challenges and therefore let the college to run um, and smooth, smoothly. But needless to say, uh, that is a, a table of all the meetings that will run during this academic year, ending uh, on the 26th of November 2020. Chair, in terms of committees, uh, the council in collaboration with management, of course, we have established the following statutory committees, namely Audit and Risk Committee, Finance Committee, IT Committee, Academic Board Committee, and also the Infrastructure Committee. Concerns, Chairperson, concerns around governance are the following. Uh, we, we still take it that the uh, induction of council members is very, very important. So as to clear and make things clear between oversight or fiduciary duties as, as, as opposed to operational uh, uh, matters. And therefore, the oversight role of the College Council Chairperson has been discussed clearly in the Council meetings, so as to avoid issues of uh, um, no clarity in, in as far as roles and responsibilities are concerned. And on, also, Chairperson, we have also looked at the issue of uh, uh, procurement, the supply chain management processes, because I'm sure members will agree with me when I say in public entities mostly, it, this always becomes a slippery slope. So we clarified a number of things with uh, the, the management of the council, I mean of the college, my apology, and therefore I believe uh, from here the college will be running very, very smoothly. Lastly, on this particular matter of concerns, Chairperson, um, there's uh, an issue around seating allowances, but I'm glad to announce that uh, this matter has been addressed at the council level, and also on the 25th of this month, uh, June, we will be having um, another ordinary meeting, and this matter will be clar clarified further, because we have been, we have actually uh, invited the department official to come and put this matter to rest once and for all. In terms of the interface, uh, interface governance and management, Chairperson, this matter is related to what I've just said around the concerns and governance. We, we are very clear, Chair, as, as, as the Council of the Western Tibet College, that uh, uh, we would like to ensure that what, what is, uh, we would like to ensure that uh, what it is, what we are attempting rather to achieve remains relevant and achievable. And this is uh, basically clear in our strategic plan as a college and also in our operational plans of the college. Chairperson, secondly, we have mentioned that we've appointed a number of uh, statutory uh, committees in the form of audit and risk, in the form of IT, et cetera, et cetera. And also we have uh, um, established, uh, in, in fact, appointed, let me say, let me put it this way, appointed the, uh, the IA, which is actually in charge of uh, managing risks and uh, assisting management to make sure that uh, risks are managed. So, Chair, in short, I won't go much deeper into that. Uh, let me finally speak to the investigations against the Council. And, Chair, I'm happy to announce that uh, so far, there are no current challenges in as far as uh, the current council is concerned. There are no investigations at all, but uh, there has been a concern because the previous uh, council has been, has been investigated, uh, mostly around the issues of seating allowances, which is why I said, Chairperson, that uh, the issue of seating allowances is uh, being addressed, is going to be addressed, rather, in the meeting that is coming on the 25th of June uh, this month. Chair for today, honorable members, let me leave it there. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Can we get principal to take us through the management aspect of the report? Principal. 
Chairperson, I'm still opening my slides. Your slides. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. With the slides, uh, principal. Can you hear me, Chairperson? Loud and clear. Continue. Okay. Uh, Chairperson and Honorable MPs, college colleagues, good evening. Principal. Uh, management, executive, management executive, as indicated on the slide, I'm A.B. Mashele. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I just want to remind you that you have got Let's see. You have got 15 minutes to take us through the entire presentation. Wow. So the key issues. <laughs> uh, don't have time. That is, eh? that is the disadvantage of being last. Eh? No, we shall try for 20 minutes. Uh, I am acting principal because the principal had been suspended, but we had the rumor that he has gone on retirement at the end of April. The council has not received any communication from department, so we'll call that as a rumor. And then we have management, senior management. The college does not have the following managers. Hello? Can you hear me? We can hear you, principal, continue. Uh, the college does not have the following managers, finance, academic, HR, procurement. And student support, we do have a manager, but she has been on IOD, which is in Jaron duty. We call that in Jaron duty because she was removed by students and it ended up on a sick leave. Campus managers, the campus managers, the college has four campuses and the one satellite campus. Four campus managers are acting and one permanent. HODs, there are no HODs on campuses. The, pro the proposed critical positions have been submitted to department for approval of the positions. The management requests the DHEAD for the following. We, we can say we request the committee to assist us. The creation of posts which the college requested for many times as per the ratio of the students to staff, like all other colleges as soon as possible. The posts are as per the college budget and the post provisioning norms model. Interface between management, labor and students, labor, labor forum. The college established the Labor Forum formally in 2019. Meetings are held with a Labor Forum. The function of the Labor Forum is to ensure that there is sound and fair employer-employee relations. Consultation with staff through Labor Forum to ensure smooth contribution, contributions to the success of the college. Student Representative Council. The last non democratical elections of the SRC were held in February 2015. Each and every year, the remaining SRC members disrupted elections and they co opted their friends to be on the SRC. In 2019, the acting principal disbanded the illegitimate SRC and they locked the SRC offices because they were refusing to, to vacate the offices. Some of these SRC members have been with the college since 2013 without completing any qualification. This year, the college conducted SRC free, <coughs> free and fair election for the first time. Student enrollment, uh, because of time, we are just going to say that the uh, actual projection was the first column, and then we enrolled that 5554, 
and then we have footfall of 2,833. This 2,833 is what we project to enroll for the second semester, the shortfalls. Engineering studies also we anticipated to enroll trimester two and trimester three, but now trimester three has been cancelled for trimester two. NCV we always struggle to get numbers of NCV. The pre-vocational learning programs, we projected 60, we over-enrolled by 25. Total, 17,653. At the moment, we enrolled 9,740. So if you take the second semester, the third trimester, we were going to reach the projections. Report on status of college administration. The college council adopted the following policies. If you count, you find that there are 22 policies. And the, when the council and the acting principal were appointed, there were no policies approved by the previous council. Uh, I'm going to just uh, highlight on one of the important policies which uh, normalize the situation at our college. The first one, part-time policy. Before this policy, there was just an agreement between the council and labor that each and every lecturer will be paid 450 per student. And that ended up having the college enrolling more part-time students than full-time. A class which could accommodate 60, 30 students in the morning as part-time accommodated 90 or even 100, and the student did not attend. The results were bad. That's why our college was last uh, in the past, but as from last year, we moved to number 35 from 50 in the business studies and number 48 in engineering. Report on status of college administrations, other administrative, the strategic and operational plan were approved in September, supposed to be September 2019, by College Council. The College Council established college committees as indicated by the chairperson. The indicative budget was approved by the College Council. The PPL model of critical positions was submitted to the Wow. <clears throat> investigations. The investigations on maladministration, misuse of state property, nepotism, and the embezzlement of college funds by the principal. Not me, of course, the previous principal. He <laughs> had commissioned the investigation in 2018. The investigation was conducted by PWC disciplinary hearing took place on the 25th, the first sitting, 25th of March, 2020. But because of the lockdown, the investigation, the disciplinary hearing could not continue. And then we had, as I indicated, that the principal was given uh, approval to retire on the 8th of April. Financial management. Capacity of managers, current financial managers, Deputy Principal Finance, Mr. Ali, has got the qualifications as indicated there, highly qualified with a lot of experience. And then the financial aid with Mr. Semper there with the business management. Also, I like to believe that is highly experienced. Finance manager, as we indicated, there's none. Audit outcome, in 2016, 2017, we received qualified, but from there on, we received unqualified. So this year, we are working towards clean audit. It's what our DPF, Deputy Principal Finance, promised the acting principal and the council. Matters raised by Auditor General, review of policies and procedures to be more regular, 
NSFAS grab disclosure in terms of funds received and receivable, no significant matters reported. Hence, we indicated that we are working towards clean audit. Uh, audit taken plan in total seven audit findings reported as follows. One policy review, since we did not have policies, six on disclosure matters. College is reviewing all policies more regularly. Quality assurance been more detailed before submission. Financial statements for audit. Uh, as the chairperson of council indicated, we are going to have a special meeting to approve more, the, more policies. And as far as summary, we, we have 4,442 students who received their allowances to the total of 39 million, you can say 38 million, received from NSFAS. So far, we received 29 million, while we have already paid 38 million. For tuition, we received 14 million, and the grand total of 43 million academic year, saving the academic year, engineering studies netted report 191 and one up to N6, campuses developed revised timetables where periods will be 30 minutes. There will be four periods without breaks. Students will not move from classes, but <coughs> lecturers will change. Task teams were established to work on self-study materials for students. The material will be easily under, under, understood and they will be uploaded to the college website, which of course is zero rated. Uh, zero red, rated. When NS funded students will start to receive laptops as promised by the minister, the college will provide the lecturers with laptops. This will not be an easy task as students and lecturers will need intensive training. College lecturers have access to college emails. This opportunity will be extended to all students. We are continually exploring other, other means of supporting students. Online teaching and learning. Online is one possible intervention during the difficult times of COVID-19. It does not have serious challenges. It does have serious challenges as the majority of our students do not have gadgets or even a simple cell phone. Training and equipment needs to be in place before considering online. TVET education is a triangle where the apex is Department of Examinations. Before online examinations can be considered, DHET needs to be prepared to conduct online examinations. I wonder if department can be ready by this year. The first base in the college would be the development of online material as the movement of all students received textbooks at the moment. Even universities are struggling with online teaching and learning. Colleges has capacity mm -hmm. challenge in terms of lecturers. Online teaching and learning will be prioritized in the next strategic plan and they will be piloted in future, but not for the current academic year. Campus management teams will need training to manage online. The college will have classes starting at half past seven until seven o'clock in the evening, six days a week. Business and utility studies. Campuses are developing timetables for these programs. 
The programs normally have bigger enrollment numbers and the extra lecturers may be employed. The college is ready to welcome these students back. The PPEs will be distributed on the first day when they return. The students will be divided into smaller groups to observe the social distancing. State of college readiness, deep cleaning of all classrooms, computer labs, toilets, and offices took place. Cleaning certificates can be produced. Temperature screening and the sanitization will take place at all entrances. Sanitizers are placed at every classroom. Social distancing in classes will be 1.5 up to two meters. Training was provided to the college by higher health. COVID-19 also include, include training by higher health and committees established and documents developed, mm. key protocols and guidelines. Mm. The Please following point. Yes, Chepesa. I'm going to ask you to wrap up in a minute, no? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Uh, the following policies and processes have been developed. Uh, the council is going to approve the COVID-19 policy, and they are going to use the higher health COVID-19 protocols, the COVID-19 workplace plan, and the work rotation plan is going to be in place. Guidelines for post-education and training institutions for management of uh, management of and response to mental health and substance abuse in, re in relation to COVID-19, higher health volunteer program. The thermometers are problematic because many of them are malfunctioning. It's just a pity because we purchase them thinking that they are working, but some of them are not working. These are replaced by the supplier. We try by all means to replace them. It is difficult for the college to find health workers around the region due to their current workload. Thank okay. you very much, honorable members. Thank you, Principal. Uh, I see you wanted to read every word that was written in your presentation. <laughs> Next time, summarize. Okay. okay. Can we get a uh, SRC, please just be brief. You must emulate the example of Obit College uh, SRC. Okay, can you stop sharing your presentation? Let's get the SRC to come in. Yes, thank you very much, Chair. My name is uh, Chiri Fakamata, and I'm the newly elected resident of West Coast. Uh, I wanted to, uh, to bring to attention that when I was elected, I told the management that I want to work hand in hand with them. And if they uh, step on our toes, we'll have problems. By the way, the, the presentation will focus on uh, 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 the following. Uh, Bazaris, mainly NSFAS and GCRA, infrastructure, college, shortage of lectures, e-learning, delays of issuing certificates, and recognition of the SRC. So in essence, this presentation serves to put an eye on issues Western uh, Chivet College students are facing and the status quo. That does not favor the needs of students. Now, Bazar, GCRA and uh, NSFAS. Uh, Chair, through you, we understand that our college does not use um, NSFAS wallet for the disbursement of allowances. Therefore, NSFAS give money to our college and payments are facilitated from our financial offices. Now, what is happening in this issue is that this leads to late payments and a large number of students do not receive uh, allowances. And currently we have about uh, over 900, if not 1,000 students that have not received their allowances since the beginning of the uh, 2019, uh, 2020 academic year. Now, on GCRA, there's a, there are misinformation regarding payments because 
GCRA officials tell us that they pay only for transport and situ uh, situation fee. But when we ask the management of which what is happening regarding the allowance of students, they always tell us that uh, GCRA only pays for situation fee. Now, or I'm going to the second point because I want to be very brief. On infrastructure, West Core does not have student residences and or accommodation. And this is very challenging as students are now resorting to private accommodation with lease agreements uh, with the Lord. And the, 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 the students have a challenge of, uh, with the challenge of not receiving any first allowances, they end up languishing in the street. Sometimes they sleep with landlords uh, uh, to, to in order for favor of having accommodation. And that is very, very challenging for us. The infrastructure is very bad, Chair. As there are cracks at some campuses, buildings have cracks and the roof is also damaged and we are experiencing water leakage when it's raining. The next point is shortage of lectures. Now, as the SRC, our view on this is that at our college, we feel like education is treated as a privilege instead of a right because students are now registered only to attend certain modules and certain modules are left without attention as there are no lectures to teach and assess the students. My next point is on e-learning. The e-learning has not been implemented to our college uh, and what has happened is that the college has issued a link where learning material was supposed to be posted and the link was not even effective to all students. And we felt like it is an exclusion to other students as they didn't have, they don't have actually rather a uh, gadget. And this uh, uh, link sometimes was working, sometimes it's not working. And when you try to download question papers, it was also a problem. Now delays on of issuing uh, certificates uh, is that students have been experiencing problems <laughs> as they complete their studies and have to wait two to three years to receive their qualification. Now, this have a negative impact on students who then need to present evidence that indeed they have obtained a certain qualification from West, uh, Western Tibet College. Now, I'm going to the next point, which is the recognition of the SRC. Now, we feel uh, undermined, Chair, because the decisions that are taken by management about students without consulting with us. And again, we feel undermined because the SRC is not uh, uh, represented at some of the committees like financial committee and uh, tender committee as such. And now on student health, with this, with this uh, uh, the next point is that there are lack of general workers chair uh, we're having a problem that we don't have cleaners at our colleges. And with this pandemic of uh, COVID-19, we'll have problems. The college toilets are not properly accommodative for students. As rooms are not properly cleaned. And our college does not have sick bays as it is required that every college to have a uh, sick base, even without COVID-19. <clears throat> Now I hear that the, I had that chairperson of our council said they, they had about four council meetings and uh, I want to tell you that uh, the SRC was never there and we never even uh, what you, uh, 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 notified <clears throat> that they are council meeting. <clears throat> now in conclusion, chair, is that the, 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 the students from Tibet sector are treated like stepchildren in this country. And the department has never put an effort on resolving the issues and challenges of students from the sector. But since you've reached out to us, we hope that our Christ will never fall on death. Thank you very much. So you are saying that you have not been invited to the special meetings, the president of South Sea. Yes, Chair. Yes, Chair. Okay. Can I get an indication from members uh, who wants to engage? Uh, <clears throat> who 
we have come to the end of all the presentations. Uh, it was quite uh, long. Um, you know, you ask that a presenter takes uh, 30 minutes. They go on and on and on and on. So those are some of the challenges that we experience. But yeah, uh, uh, can I get Honorable Litsi, Honorable Borshtov? Uh, who else? Honorable Bozoli. Uh, Honorable Mams Bia. <coughs> okay. Uh, so Honorable Mananish. Just raise your hand there on the on your gadget. Check, Chief. I did. Mananiso. <clears throat> okay, we don't call. I'm not a chief, Honorable Mananiso. I would have loved to be a chief so that I don't have to come to Parliament and have my own. Uh, village there that I'm in charge of, but I'm not. So I'm a member of parliament. <clears throat> OK. Can I get the uh, Honorable Litsia to start? <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Let's acknowledge the presentations from all uh, three Tibet colleges and their uh, student representatives. I think, uh, Chairperson, um, I, I'll make a general comment or general comments, two of them, and then go straight to question. I think, uh, uh, Chairperson, um, earlier this year we learned that uh, there's about 1.6 billion of infrastructure grants that uh, were returned to Treasury uh, from Tibet colleges, which was not uh, utilized. And uh, I think, uh, Chairperson, we, we ought to uh, speak to the department. Was the department, uh, the DDG, I'm not sure if she's even here, uh, uh, Aruna, um, that, you know, I don't think there's sufficient support given to these Tibet colleges um, to transform themselves on various levels. I mean, uh, the, the president Kakamato of uh, West Call says, <coughs> um, they sometimes struggle to, to download uh, old question papers. You know, when the department has capacity to assist Tibet colleges, at least financially, to have a IT, uh, ICT systems that will allow them to do their work. Uh, when, um, I, I've visited quite a number of uh, Tibet colleges. Uh, West Call is one of them. Uh, precisely because it's in my, um, they do have a campus where I'm deployed. And I can tell you, Chairperson, that indeed uh, they do not have a student-owned or university or Tibet-owned owned, um, um, accommodation. And if you remember when we had the colloquium, we also raised the same issue that the problem with the department is this, we are funding uh, Tibet college students on accommodation less than those that, uh, at, um, at universities are funding them less on food allowances, whereas they buy from the same pick and pay and, say, and same shop right, as if those at universities are buying bread for 40 rand and this one at Tibet for 10 rand. So I think uh, uh, we need to now expedite the process uh, quickly, that one of, um, um, you know, equalizing uh, the issue of uh, food allowances and to a certain extent accommodation. I have a, I have a concern on West Point College. Um, last year, November, the minister came, uh, 20, November 2019, and told us that, and I want to read uh, this part, he says on, West, on Western College, uh, an investigation in terms of Section 46.1 has been conducted and uh, a report on the finding has been prepared and will, uh, will be submitted 
to the minister once a legal opinion on the finding on the finding has been received. The principal in his presentation says uh, they were scheduled to do a um, a DC with the former principal, um, who you know, uh, Chairperson is accused of very serious very serious allegations there. And now we're told now that in April uh, he has been granted an early retirement. I mean, the department really must come and tell us what is it that is happening here? What is it that they're trying to achieve with all of these things? Because uh, it can't be that somebody's accused of serious crimes like this um, and then nothing happens. It means, Chairperson, we will see what is happening now with the new vice chancellor of Sipakomakad, where somebody's accused of very serious crimes and moves from being a vice chancellor of one university to being appointed a, a vice chancellor of the other. It's because of all of these things. We are unable to follow all of uh, these things of our. On Kim Hinta, <clears throat> also the minister said uh, the culture of uh, teaching and learning at the college had collapsed, you know, due to numerous inefficiencies. Uh, so um, they must also assist us and tell us how far are they with. Uh, with, with, with all of these things. Maybe two questions uh, quickly, Chairperson. One, <clears throat> uh, West Call says that they've got four, I think, acting campus managers, if I'm not uh, mistaken, and, and many acting senior managers. How are they able to function? And I know for a fact, Chairperson, that this post, this senior post at Tibet colleges are not filled by the institution. So I do not want us to be too harsh on these um, colleagues of ours, be because I know these ones, they are filled by, by DHEAD. So if Aruna is not there, I'm not sure if there's anybody who's here from uh, the department who can assist us. Why are these institutions, uh, these senior posts are not uh, filled on time so that these institutions can really um, uh, finish? I think uh, one general question is to these uh, colleagues of ours. Those who are paying, like what's called, who are paying directly. Um, how far behind are they with the stipends of this, these learners? Uh, I do not want to go into social economic issues because that will be a political statement, but some of these learners really live on this uh, uh, stipend. How far behind are we uh, in paying those who are not on the NSFAD wallet? And uh, how far, and what are the issues? And I know some of them will say, the issues NSFAS have not said this student or this uh, this student has been uh, um, has been funded. So how far are you with NSFAS in expediting the process of getting all that information is true for crying out loud. It can be that we have a problem of unfunded uh, students even today who are still going to school, not knowing whether they are funded or not. It's June, it's mid, it's mid year. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, Honorable uh, uh, You did set an example. Otherwise, yeah, I know you go on and on and on, but at least you are mindful of time. Honorable Boshoff, uh, can we find out, oh, sorry, Honorable Boshoff, before you come in, is there a rep from the department? The DDG, we didn't get an apology. Uh, uh, can I come in? It's Aruna, Honorable Chair. It's Aruna from the TVET branch, Acting DDG. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> uh, Honorable Boshoff. Okay, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I just have uh, three questions, one to each of the colleges. Uh, maybe I could say globally seen, uh, it's actually, uh, you know, a riddle if one listened at the uh, at the presentations, why any of these colleges would have been invited to um, to submit anything to the um, committee? Because it seems as if everything is quite uh, fine. If I if I listen to the um, presentations now at King Insa, I want to know that uh, a part of the whole um, uh, analysis is that there is a collapse of the culture of learning, and I didn't hear either the um, management or the board or the students uh, referring to what this actually means. I mean, does learning actually happen? 
at, at King Insa, or, or what happens, uh, what does it mean if there's a collapse of culture of learning? And then at Orbit, uh, I, I, I think one should congratulate them on the uh, high number of enrollments that they uh, receive. And I think that's positive. It, it, it uh, says something about a culture of learning in those communities. But can they deal with the positive variance with the f facilities available, especially in the light of social distancing? Um, because if I remember correctly from the analysis, it was also said that Orbit um, has dilapidated um, facilities. So can, can they deal with, with this over enrollment? And then um, for West College, I, I also just want to refer to the uh, previous principal was allowed to um, to early retire. I believe that doesn't exclude uh, that any um, uh, measures are going to taken against him. I, I just want to confirm on that. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Zoli. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure I agree with Honourable Bostock that this, these three shouldn't have come to the portfolio mm -hmm. committee. I think they all have quite severe problems. And what we're looking at here is the beginning of solving them. Just the beginning in a year's time, they should all perhaps come back to uh, illustrate to us how, how how it's gone for a year because all three of them have got new councils in place and those councils are only just beginning to grapple with the the problems in the colleges um, and many of the problems are to do with infrastructure and um, and students and, and learning culture and instability internal instability um, so I, I would like to see all of them report to us in another year as to whether the various issues that they've been appointed to solve have actually been solved and that there is regular learning, regular teaching, um, uh, better infrastructural provision, better communication with students and all of the things we've heard about. I mean, the student presentations are very worrying. The, um, the hints of presentation um, to me by the SRC was really bad. I mean, I, I'm wondering what's happening with your student admissions when your SRC president is almost illiterate from, from what I could see and gave a very poor presentation. Nevertheless, reading between the lines, of his, um, it seems as though there is a very poor student experience at the college. And students, as he says, only get attention when they riot, I presume the new board, which sounds very efficient, will be able to remedy that situation and bring students more on board. Um, if, if, if you could confirm that that, that that is one of the things you're aiming to do. In the Orbit case, again, a good presentation from what looks like a, a good board. Um, but again, students are quite Aren't, aren't quite as happy. Um, there was one whole campus closed for three months this year and not to do with COVID, but to do with student riots. Now that that's unacceptable. You can't have a college closed for three months. And um, the, the, the it's interesting that students seem to be very interested in, in the, the both student both Orbit and Hintze, the student were worried about whether or not they had had the Lachotla, but didn't say anything about whether they had actually learned anything in their classes. So I think that maybe students need to be um, directed towards what is important in education, which is education, um, and, 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 and not um, things like Lachotla. But anyway, um, as far as West Col is concerned, I think this is a very serious case because you've got a, a situation where your principal, who has only just been suspended or whatever he is, um, on very serious charges, maladministration, uh, misuse of state property, nepotism and embezzlement, please reassure us that even though your principal take early retirement, that the investigation will continue because there could be 
criminal charge involved here. In fact, there should be criminal charges involved here. And it would be uh, immoral, I think, for the, for the college not to continue with those. So I look for your, your reassurance. Uh, none of the colleges, well, only one of the colleges, sorry, and that was Orbit, talked about the quality of teaching in, in any depth at all. We got no idea of what the effect of all of these these upheavals at, uh, um, at management and council level. I mean, the one college has no senior staff at all. So all of these upheavals at the senior level, um, what is the effect on the quality of teaching and learning? I mean, that should be one of our, or our, if not, um, what are learning and what are they coming and are they actually able to get jobs with what they are learning because otherwise they're going to be spending years in these colleges fighting over issues like accommodation and nisplast and uh, toilets and ceilings and all of those things but they're not going to be able to get a job because they haven't learned it so I do, I do believe that we need some sense of what's going on in terms of teaching and learning um, in, in the colleges, and um, and and perhaps that yeah. could be uh, elaborated on on when they report back to us um, in a year. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Bozoli. Uh, maybe just a point of correction, Honorable Bozoli, uh, because we also have to be courteous to those that we invite to come and and present themselves to us. So if we use a language like uh, an illiterate, I don't think that is in keeping of the standard and the decorum uh, of the committee. I too was not happy with the presentation of uh, the president of the SRC, but I think to call him illiterate, I think is taking it too far. Uh, just that correction. Thank you. I, I was through that statement. Thank you, Chair. Okay, that's fine. Can we get uh, Mums Bia? Uh, Mums Bia Ukona? Okay, we'll come back yes. to Mums Bia. Yes, I'm, I'm here. Okay, go ahead. Okay, thanks for the presentation. Uh, and in Hinza Tibet College, there is a, a um, filling of vacancies, which, vac which vacancies are not yet filled. And uh, SRC, there is no support from the council. Why are not supported? Uh, and the absence of the principal in the office both principal and the deputy principal always are not in the office. Why not? There is no induction for SRC. Why not? Uh, short notices of meetings. Why are they given the short notice of the meetings? Obit Tivet. Uh, the principal was appointed in May, but started his duty in July, why? Started very late. SRC, do you have any plan for students, for those who are traveling 30 to 32 kilometers? West Coal, um, e-learning not yet implemented, why not? Lack of general workers, why? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mams Bia. Uh, Honorable Notada. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, can I just uh, check, Chair? Can you hear me and see me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can see you. Continue. All right. Good evening, uh, Chair, and everybody on the line. It's good to be back. Um, I just have a uh, general questions for all the colleges and then I'll go specifically chat to some of them. Um, based on uh, the, um, the issues that have come up around student allowances, and I think all the SRC representatives have raised that, 
you have also flagged it in all your presentations. May I just check what um, uh, distribution mechanism are you using? Um, this goes to all the colleges. Are you using e -wall, the NSFOS wallet, or are you directly dispersing funds to students as a college? And based on your response on that, how many students have not received their funds uh, at this point in time? Why is that the case? And what plan is there in place uh, to ensure that uh, that is mitigated? And those maybe that respond uh, not being on NSFAS wallet, when do they plan to move over to that system? Because seemingly colleges that pay to students directly uh, are failing to do so. Second point, I think uh, Honorable Pozzoli did touch on it, but I wanted to check, Chair, if we can't get a full report in terms of the qualifications of the lecturers in these institutions, based on the curriculum offerings they are there, as well as uh, the qualifications and expertise um, of people uh, in the councils and the senior management. So as to do an oversight on of whether people are qualified to do the work that they do, because when I look at King Yenza, in terms of financial management, it's been dismal. And it would be quite interesting to see who actually uh, runs those finances, even though they've raised issues of having water issues in Amatol and whatever the case may be. But I think those qualifications and those people that lead those particular departments need to be scrutinized much more closely. And maybe we might pick up things that happened to the previous principal as well in the other college of nepotism and so forth. And then the last general question uh, to all uh, these uh, institutions. Um, as you may know, during COVID-19, uh, we are forced to basically go digital. What, what plans have you put in place um, to make sure that there's ICT infrastructure uh, improvements in your institutions? Um, and ultimately, the easy, the easy, easy access of, of, of data or internet in response to uh, how we need to move the curriculum forward. Then the specified questions, Chair, just to go to King Ginza. Um, there has been a turnaround strategy that has been given uh, to King Ginza by the Department of Higher Education and Training. I wanted to check, uh, has that, has that strategy, is that strategy being implemented? Um, and uh, what is the progress on it? Um, and then secondly, um, in terms of the qualified orders that you've been getting, uh, what consequence management have you put in place uh, to make sure that the mistakes that have been happening in the previous years don't continue? West call, um, I think you've answered my question that I had. It had to do with investigations. Um, Orbit, uh, which is my last question, Chair. Um, there has been issues that have been raised around dilapidated infrastructure, uh, the academic exclusions, the non-payment of NSF students. How are these issues being addressed at this point in time? Are they resolved, or what the prog what is the progress on them? Thank you so much, Chair. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Mananiso. Mm -hmm. We're not doing well in terms of time. Eh? Okay, thank you, Chair presentations uh, on the issue of King Hinza College. I think I'm covered by Comrade Debo, and I would like to emphasize that there's lack of sense of organizational behavior in the institution. I mean, we can't be told by an SRC member to say that if they, they don't get satisfaction, they resort to vandalizing. So I, I think they need to get their house in order. However, on other issues, they are doing well. On the issue of orbit, uh, Comrade Chair, we must acknowledge that uh, at least on the uh, performance with regards to teaching and learning, they are doing well. However, one needs to check in terms of the composition of the uh, Council on Issues of Gender Demographics. Actually, this one, it goes to all these uh, uh, colleges. I want to know if uh, how many males and females do they have do they have people with disability and as well the issues of race? The other matter, Chair, is with regards to uh, what has been indicated by both uh, SRC and the management. I think there's lack of proper relationship in terms of governance and management by these two parties. I want to check how were they involved, SRC members, in terms of preparing for this uh, new normal. 
were they part or were they excluded in the, in all these processes of checking that they they comply with all the health and safety issues uh, lastly chair is our on the issue of 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 west call uh, i know that they have uh, a burden with regards to the issue of infrastructure where you would find these young women resulting to prostitution on the basis that they don't have accommodation within the premises. I want to check if they do have plans, future plans, to build a, a, a residence within their facilities so that they deal with this issue because it can be coming every year, uh, every uh, uh, five-year period that we are being told about this issue of a lack of uh, of uh, residential or accommodation in West Coast. So I want to check if they do have uh, uh, the plan. Uh, lastly, it's uh, on the issue of the GCRA. How many are beneficiaries of GCRA vis-a-vis -vis the beneficiaries of NESWAS? And in terms of the, the relationship with, with GCRA, uh, how are they managing their relationship? Because we know with West Call, sometimes it's good, sometimes it, it, with Nesfas, it's good, sometimes it's sour. However, one can as well acknowledge and applaud the leadership of West, West Call College that they, indeed they are trying to make sure that they, they focus on the vision and mission of what they need to do as West, West College. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Mananiso. Um, can uh, uh, oh, the last one is Honorable Katie. Last, Honorable Katie, you raised your hand when I closed, but I'm going to use my discretion and give you about two minutes to put across your question. Thanks, Jefferson. Thanks. Uh, everyone who have given uh, the presentation today. Yeah, but for the information, I if I raised my hand before uh, Comrade Mananiso did. Maybe you couldn't recognize it, but maybe let me <laughs> start with the reason why I interjected earlier on when you asked a gentleman from NSFAS when he put an apology from the administrator. I think it's very important, Chairperson, that from time to time when we engage with these institutions, particularly Tibet colleges, we we bring the NSFAS abroad because it's very important that uh, whenever we deal with financial issues, like why are finance, uh, why are grants not paid, why are you know the the, the allowances of students not paid, the, the, the college must be able to tell us what happened. Some of them, are, it's not clear when you look at their report, right? And maybe when NSFAS is here, the administrator, when he is, he is here, we are able to then deliberate on those issues. The same uh, point goes across the AG's report. The Auditor General's report is very important to reflect on it before we are told what is good, what is really happening with each and every college. Because we're told that this is, these are the findings of the AG. It's them telling us. We have never seen the AG's report. How sure are we that they are giving the true reflection of reality? So those are the kind of issues that we need to look into moving forward, right? Now, I want to uh, also echo the sentiments of the chairperson with regard to the SRC of Hinza and the way we are pro projecting his behavior and how he presented his his uh, presentation, and I don't blame him. And that is the status of our colleges across the country. That is exactly what is happening. That is us. He, he represent us that cater. Don't be misled by a very bombastic English of terms on how I would. No, no. That is exactly how the syllabus in Tibet colleges is, and they are eager to transform it. That is exactly what is happening. I want to also ask the last point, Chairperson, and I know that I'm just taking too much time. There's a, there's, there's a grant coming from government. It's called the infrastructure grant that is given to colleges to perhaps deal with the infrastructure challenges across board. And we understand that given the crisis of COVID-19, we know very well from where I am sitting and where you are sitting, Chairperson, we are aware that almost all 100% of the Tibet colleges, campuses in South Africa do not have capacity to have 
a suitable manner to deal with the uh, COVID-19. We know that infrastructure is bad. Toilets are bad. Like, everything is bad. We know that, right? And we want to check what is it that they've been doing with this infrastructure grant they've been receiving from government. And those are the, the only things that I will want to maybe uh, take across for now. Chair, thanks. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Honorable Kietze. Um, uh, I think in the main, uh, there does not seem to be serious concerns about these colleges. The concerns that were there, which were highlighted by the department, uh, seem to have been attended by the new councils, uh, both in, in King Hinza and then at West Call. Uh, albeit, uh, there don't seem to be much issues there, except <clears throat> there is a need to improve the relationship between the students and management um, and also I saw the expenditure uh, on infrastructure I think uh, the expenditure is quite low I don't know whether you'll be able to reach or to meet the targets that you have set yourself but in the overall uh, it does seem like uh, uh, things are going well. <clears throat> Just to say to Honorable Boshoff that uh, it's our responsibility to probe. Sometimes you may think that things are okay, hunky dory from the outside, but when you begin to ask questions, it's then that you pick up that there are issues. So the fact that we engage with entities and they come and present and we don't pick up any problem does not in itself suggest that we should not engage with those entities. We have to, because we need to understand what is happening. I think ultimately at the end of our term, we should ideally have engaged with each and every Tibet college in this country. Each and every university should have appeared before this committee. Each and every CETA, each and every entity that is within the portfolio so that we can have a sense of what is happening across the board. But maybe just to be specific on my points, uh, I must say that I, I take a, quite a serious exception from what was said by the president of uh, King Hinza that uh, for you to become relevant, you have to vandalize property in order to be taken serious. We cannot allow that. Just to add on what Honorable Mananiso was saying, you, there is no justification for the destruction of property because that property does not belong to you. That property belongs to generations to come after you. So you don't have to be... Uh, inconsiderate and just because you have got some grievance and you then uh, burn the buildings destroy the property there is no justification for that so if you want to be taken serious uh, use other means other than to destroy property so you must take that as a stand warning from our side that we will not allow that because if you do that we will call for law enforcement agency to descend on you. We will call that uh, you must be followed up and justice must prevail because in most instances, uh, property gets destroyed and you disadvantage those who are coming after you. Uh, so please, let's not do that. Find a way of raising your issues of finding management to take you serious without uh, destroying property. Uh, I, I guess the, the main issue that has been raised today or this evening is uh, this issue of the former principal of West Call. Um, <clears throat> issues that were raised and we have not been explained what are the nature of those issues that uh, the former principal has been uh, um, accused of 
And uh, all that we pick up is that there is some kind of uh, an early retirement. So we would like the department to explain to us, to give us a report as to what has happened there. Because if we treat matters like this, uh, <clears throat> We we are going to encourage impunity in the system. People do things and then they get away with it. So we shouldn't do that. Um, I'm worried about the comment by the SRC that they are not invited to the meetings of council, the special meetings. Um, <clears throat> it's something that uh, I don't know whether it's true. If indeed it's true, uh, then it means those councils were not properly constituted because the SRC president and the secretary general are supposed to be part of those meetings. So we require an explanation from uh, uh, from council as to why are they doing that. But I must say that I did not really get a sense of whether the financial reporting and financial management is in order. I think it might be because of owing to the limitations of time. I would have loved to see how the, the, the three colleges are managing their finances. Remember, we are coming from a situation where um, the department used to provide support through the deployment of uh, those chartered accountants from SAICA. And then they were withdrawn. And the reports that we're getting from the department was that uh, there seemed to be problems after the withdrawal. So I don't get a sense. I guess what needs to be done is that if the three colleges can just give us the detail of the financial management together with uh, the status of the audit outcomes and the detailed action plan. Uh, submit that to the committee. So I think what we will do, honorable members, because uh, we do not have enough time, we will ask that uh, the DDG from the department just to make a quick comments. And then we will ask the three colleges then to make detailed, give us detailed responses to the questions that have been raised by the members. And then we'll look into our program, whether is it possible to identify an hour where we can then invite them back to come and, uh, and respond to the questions that uh, have been raised by the members. Because if we were to start to give them it's going to be one minute, one minute, and that won't be uh, very effective in engaging with the three colleges that are here. But generally, on the face of it, it does look like uh, there are no major issues. Not that there are no issues, because I could pick up some of the errors. But uh, they seem to be going, the three colleges seem to be going in the right direction. What I hear the committee to be saying is to express its uh, unhappiness about how this matter of the principal of West Call was handled. But let's just get uh, the acting DDG, just brief comments. Okay, good Chair, evening. Can I please check with the members have been saying? Who's speaking can, now? Can I please check with you, Chair? It's Kakamazo from West Call. I just want to check with you something. Okay. Uh, because we couldn't send the presentation and we made it short, can you please send it uh, uh, so that you can go through it? Yeah, no, it's fine. Okay, I did thank you for the question. I did see, okay. but you can risk it again. Okay, thank you very much. All right, sure. Uh, DDG? Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. I will be brief in the interest of time. What I picked up from all the um, you know comments from, and questions from the honourable members, the two issues that came up both for the department that the department has been culpable in, um, and they both relate to West Call. 
The first one is around the gaps in the uh, appointments at, at um, mainly middle management level. We'll come to the senior management because that has to do with the previous principle. So there are gaps in the middle management, but there has been uh, a great deal of movement of recent at that level. But it is something we are tending to. It's not the only college, I must add. Um, we are a bit backlogged with expediting um, appointments at colleges at the middle management level, because at any, you know, at that level, uh, we have 200 posts across colleges at um, the deputy principal level. And to fill all of them expeditiously and, you know, within a short space of time is problematic and, and the onslaught of COVID hasn't helped. But I agree, I absolutely agree, uh, like with some of the other colleges, it's impacting on the colleges and we really need to address it urgently and we are doing so. Coming to the second point of the um, uh, report, the Price Waterhouse Coopers report, that was delivered at the end of March. And um, it is with our legal services. We have asked our legal services to advise on what would be the immediate next steps. In the meantime, the principal, um, I suppose, knowing what is contained in that report, because he would have been engaged in the course of, of producing the report, uh, decided to take early retirement when that offer came about from government. So um, he is slightly uh, short of the actual retirement age, but it's a, a prerogative that he exercised. But that by, by no means... Sorry, is somebody, but that uh, by no means means that he's going to be exonerated. That is exactly why the report is with the legal services so that we are advised on how to proceed. And um, if he needs to, be, you know, any charges need to be brought uh, against him, those will certainly be followed through. But um, there has, you know, just as the, as the report was delayed, we went into the shutdown. But we will uh, resume that uh, issue immediately going forward from now on. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, those questions that were directed to the department, please take time and respond to them. And then we will schedule an, a, a date we just need an hour, maybe 45 minutes max, to invite the three colleges again to come back and uh, and uh, respond uh, formally to uh, to the questions. I hope that they were taking notes of all the issues that members were raising, so that they shouldn't leave anything out uh, from the issues. But I think uh, in the overall, <clears throat> uh, the engagement was fine. Uh, just next time, uh, please, uh, the issue of time is quite important to us in Parliament. If you are given three minutes, you speak in three minutes and we are done. So in future, when you come back, please just make sure that you take that into consideration. Uh, but otherwise, uh, it has been a very good engagement. Uh, I'm worried about the SRC of King Hinza, and I think that uh, <clears throat> the management there and leadership of council must take steps to make sure that they capacitate that structure, they take them through the necessary training so that they are able to fulfill their responsibilities as the leadership of the student because they were elected by the students. So make the conditions possible that they must execute their their task they must be given sufficient capacity to do their work uh, of representing the students there otherwise i'd like to thank you very much um, uh, honorable members and all our invited guests uh, we are Meeting again, I think on Friday, uh, we'll be receiving a presentation from the minister. Uh, finally, we'll be having him on the issues that we've raised with them. Next week, Tuesday, we were supposed to have Sfako uh, Mahatu, <clears throat> but uh, we've decided that we must look for and uh, 
that's poured on Friday because uh, it's it's quite clear to us that uh, we need sufficient preparation for that engagement. We're going to do an inquiry. So that inquiry will have a uh, part A and part B. So the part A will then deal with the issues around the appointment at Sfagomakato. And the part B will deal with the, the issues there at University of Enda and those allegations there. So for the part A, we'll start with it on Friday. If we are going to be given uh, additional three hours, because we think that we need six hours, uh, because we'll be inviting uh, some witnesses uh, to come and and uh, and uh, uh, you know interact with us, <clears throat> so we need some more time. So next week uh, we 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 will be meeting on Friday and not on Tuesday. There is a youth parliament on Friday, so given that the committee is, uh, has got quite a number of members who are still youthful, including Honorable Boshoff. Uh, so I don't know how we're going to deal with that, but <clears throat> we will uh, see how we do that uh, so that at least we have got the full complement of the members when we start with that inquiry. Otherwise, uh, thank you very much, honorable members. Uh, thank you to the guests. So this meeting is at end. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. much. What's the name of that leader from King Hinza? What is, what's his name? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Chairperson. Honorable kids, bye. I want the name. Uh, he's, a, he's a leader. He's a leader. He's a leader. <laughs> he, you provide if they don't listen to you. He gives clarity. Yeah. Come <laughs> on. Peter. Sure. No, 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 Honorable Itzile. How do you know me? How do you know me, Honorable Itzile? <laughs> How do you know me? 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 You know, we are radical, Rona, but Honorable Peter. <laughs> Sure, my dear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let me go and study with us. We'll, 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 maybe we'll meet one day.